Hi, welcome to Artistry Collaborative. My name is Joanne and I'm so happy that you're here. Uh, as promised, the last video was a hot air balloon, but I wanted to take basically the same elements and create something different, and so we created this hot air balloon steampunk style. So I'm so glad you're here. Please try. I know you can do it. So come along. So I saw this piece on Pinterest, and I want to try to make my version of it. It was a hot air balloon, but it was bursting out of the center with something coming out of it. And um, so I want to create this. I want the background to be maps and correspondence. And oddly enough, I was going through my Tim Holtz paper and I bought a pad from him called Correspondence. So there's all these maps and pieces. And so I'm going to rip them up. Now, if you tear towards yourself, um, you don't get an edge, but if you tear like that, see, you do get an edge. So you want to tear away if you don't want that edge. So I'm just um, going to tear this up. I would like the United States on there. Although, God knows I would love to go to um, Europe someday and uh, this is all postal type things and I also have this tissue paper that has all postcards on it which I just love so we're gonna just take all these elements and glue them down one of the things that Tim Holtz does with his pads is he takes a picture of each page and makes a ephemera page. So you can get small pieces of the page if you don't want to tear up the whole page because you just need something small. So like you've got this map and we've got this postage which I really like. And again, you're probably not going to see much of this. It's going to be all in the background. And many, many people will say, why do you put it down if you're just going to cover it up? And there's all different answers and reasons. But the thing I can tell you the most is that it builds up an energy. There is... One of the reasons why I love art is because I feel like I'm sharing a piece of my soul. Um, when someone buys a piece of my art or if I give it as a gift, I feel like they're getting a little piece of me. And so lots of people will say that when you put layer after layer after layer, you're building up an energy, um, building up the love. So I like that idea a lot. and. Um, so that's one of the reasons. It also gives you great texture, such great texture. And this is going to have a lot of texture. So um, that's going to be cool. All right, so I'm going to use a gel medium. All right, and again, you can use white glue, tacky glue. You can use uh, Elmer's glue. Not the greatest because it's very thin, but it would work. And I, these canvases, this is a, I believe it's a 13 by 13. Um, I'm not sure, but let me measure it for you. Oh, this is a 12 by 12. Um, and they're supposed to be pre gessoed, but you always want to gesso it again if you're going to paint right on the canvas because we're going to fill the background with scrap paper I don't need to gesso but as a reference if you're going to paint on any canvas or piece of wood whatever it is gesso is like essential for everything because it gives you the um, it gives you 
the primer. It gives you something for the paint to hold on to. And uh, it's just essential when making art. It really is. So I kind of cheated because I wanted a nice straight edge, but you don't have to have a nice straight edge. I kind of like crooked edges, but around the the side, I thought, oh, I'll just, I'll just use what I have. I really do. So, okay, I'm going to keep going. And uh, once I have all my pieces down, I will be back. Okay, so now I want to add some texture. And so I found these stencils. And since this has a steampunk theme, um, I thought, these are pretty geometric. Of course, this is the gears. That's always steampunky. But um, we're going to use some Liquitex modeling paste. You can use a variety of items. Uh, you can use... I have also lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree. And there is also recipes online. Um that uh, teach you how to make it. It's not very difficult at all. It's usually using baking soda or baby powder. Um, I think I like the baking soda recipe better because it was very um, grainy. Uh, but, you know, you can experiment with that. Now this is very, very dry. So, I don't know how well it's going to work. But, we'll see. It doesn't really need a lot. You put it down and then you kind of scrape it off. I think I may end up using the spackling. It's much easier than this. But, um, and again, if you don't have stencils, you can use items that you have at home. You can use doilies. Um, you could take a piece of acetate from a packaging and cut out figures, geometric figures, uh, you know, this is diamonds, circles, squares, whatever you want, depending on how intricate you want it. And um, yeah, you can make your own. So don't let lack of supplies stop you. And again, you don't even have to do this if you don't like it or don't have the materials because um, you can skip this and just keep going. Uh, I just like it because I love the texture. I love the layers. Um, the one thing about mixed meter, it is, it, it is about adding layer after layer after layer. Um, sorry, that's the next door neighbor chasing her dog. Um, but, um, you know, nothing is set in stone. Nothing says you have to, and nothing says you have to use a stencil. You can take some of this spackling paste and just scrape it over the canvas. That I see people do all the time just to add texture. So. This one we're going to put here. And... Yeah, um, so if you hear singing, that's my daughter in the other room. Um, I'd normally tell her to please try to hold it down, but a eh, little singing in the background never hurt anything. No, not at all. So you get accompaniment with your tutorial. How's that? <laughs> all right. But just take your palette knife just scrape off what didn't come out right You can go over it, but I'm not going to try to line that up. I'm just going to let that be. All right, so we're going to let this dry. Okay, so 
this is the rigid wrap that I introduced you to in the last video and it simply is some kind of cloth I, I don't know if it's a cheesecloth or what it is but you just cut it into strips and then you soak it in a little dish of water warm water cold water it really doesn't matter um, and then and I mean maybe I'm gonna make some long strips because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the balloon I just took a party balloon and blew it up and we're going to cover it and we're gonna let it dry and then we are going to turn it into a hot air balloon um, and similar to what I did in the last tutorial uh, we are going to open up the inside of the balloon so something is popping out but again this is going to be a steampunk um, themed so I think they'll be like you'll see inside all gears even though hot air balloons are um, powered by the flame we're going to have all gears on the inside so I think that'll be kind of cool so you just take your piece this is very very messy so make sure that you um, cover up your counters or your tabletop wherever you do your crafts but it's just like paper mache and you're only going to do half of the balloon um, and, uh, and I guess you could do the whole thing and make two but we're going to just do half and like so it is very very messy but I don't mind I don't mind this I kind of like mess. I like digging in the dirt I love to weed people think I'm absolutely crazy but I really do love to weed I love to weed at the beginning of the season when you don't have to worry about hurting any plants I'm not so thrilled once the plants start coming up and you have to make sure that you're not pulling up a plant instead of a weed but you know after you garden long enough you know the difference but I just love to weed and uh, especially the kind that just go and go and go and go <laughs> I love it I just feel like I'm I don't know I feel like it's the best therapy in the world um, digging in the dirt and this is very much like mud <laughs> and this is very much like clay and I love it so so okay I'm gonna go and cover this way and then once I get it all covered going up and down I'm gonna cover it left to right so that it's nice and solid and um, I will come back and show you what it looks like before I let it dry okay well you can see quite a mess here <laughs> um, it, it ended up making so much of a paste I ran out of water um, that I ended up putting the paste all over it so it may dry smoother than it you know it doesn't have to be smooth by any stretch of the imagination but um, this is my balloon it goes from here to here which is probably a little bit more than I needed but that's good because when I cut it and trim it um, I'll be able to have plenty but what you're gonna do is put this aside and you're going to let it dry at least overnight if it I mean here we are it's July and um, so it's probably very humid uh, so give it plenty of time to to dry um, also don't forget about doing your basket while you're out if you don't know what I'm talking about look at the previous video um, this is just a takeout cup you know how they give you the sauce or the salad dressing in a little cup I just cut that out um, I'm gonna put some small strips in here 
with more water and just cover the basket the same way. Stop in the middle. And when you are doing the, um, like this is the last piece and it just got so tangled, I said forget it, I'm not dealing with that. A lot of them will fold on top of themselves, but open them up. You want them open and be able to cover as much of the basket and the balloon as you can. I go one way and then I like to go the other way and even though I probably will fill the basket with something, um, I like it to be covered inside and out. So I go like so. And in the last tutorial, I'm going to make sure I don't put too much on the side here because I had a hard time connecting the chains because it was so thick with all this gauzy material. So I'm just going to go once and call it a day. I want the edges very much covered. Yeah, see how it gets all bunchy? Just try to unbunch it or get a piece that's not so tangled. Dip it in the water maybe? Uh, I don't know. Right. I must be getting tired. I've been filming all day, so I think I'm reaching my my end point here. But alright. So just finish that off and let it dry. Okay. So this is the balloon that we made and you just pop the balloon and then you are going to trim it Now, if I must confess, this is the second one I had to do because <laughs> the first one did not record. So that's the challenging part about making videos is you don't know when it's exactly recording until after you're done. All right, so that's our balloon. Now we're going to go in here with a razor and it open. So just get in there, make a vertical line, hope you can see that, and then we're going to make a horizontal line. And again, it's very, very, very messy. So be prepared for that. I'm going to go in there with some scissors just to open it up a bit. And then sort of like cutting up a pie, you just go in between. And there you go. Now you're going to have layers because, you know, that's what we did. We put layers down. So 
what you do is just take some tacky glue and glue the layers together. You can be very generous with this. Um, it will be, it will dry clear and uh, don't worry about the texture because you want texture, especially for a steampunk. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh my gosh, yes. All right, so we have this. This seems like it's a little flimsy. I may add a piece to that. This one looks pretty good. This one looks like it could use some. Okay. So, that is that. So now we are going to have to wait till all this glue um, dries. So, and you can bend them so that they look like they're bursting out. Don't really want them too flat. All right, so let that dry, and I'll be back. Okay, so while we're waiting for the balloon to dry, um, we're going to work on the background some more. As you can see, I have a ton of distress sprays, dilutions, I've got Heidi Swap, folk art, I've got some pastes from Art Company, and I have some Dilutions paint. These are acrylic paints. So, I will have everything that I use in the drop-down box. I would highly recommend putting gloves on, because when you're working with stains, it is definitely messy and will definitely um, stain you so my hands always look a mess anyways but and as you can see I've covered it down with my used tissue and paper towels so yeah so I'm gonna start off with a little of this dilutions paint um, I love burgundy um, and I just think that it's a very rich color and I think it'll offset all the browns and the distress quite nicely. And I'm going to spray some water so it moves around a little bit. Get one of your baby wipes. Move it around. Yeah. All right. So I'll put that back on there. That was um Dilutions paint. The color is called pomegranate seed. And it is very pomegranate -y. All right. So let's put some some of this. This is called a metallic copper. It's by Folk Art. I'll get some of that in there. Again, you can do this with a brush. You do not have to do it with your fingers. I love the feel of it on my fingers, but you don't have to. You're going to notice that a lot of artists do not like a lot of white space on their pieces. But I think you need the white space um, to give it some contrast. So, yeah. There's that. 
Okay, let's try some brass. Let's see, this is um, Distress Stain. So I'm assuming it's Tim Holtz. See, this is tarnished brass, which I guess is the same. It's the same one as this. Okay, those two should be in one bottle. Uh, I really want to put. Let's try this fossilized amber. This is distress spray. A little more yellowy than the uh, brass. And I'm going to add a little bit of teal. Give it a little rust. Oh, I'm liking that. Yeah, that is so awesome. Oh, I am liking that. Oh, I love that. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, so we need to let this dry, and then we're going to put some pastes on there, and um, I'll be back. All right, so this is still looking a little too light for my taste, so we're going to use some dark color. This is by Dilutions. This is called Slate Gray, and we're going to see how this looks. Um, I mean, I love this color combination, but it's more vintage than steampunk. I had some extra, um, I emptied the two tarnished brass together, and so I had some extra laying around, and so I covered the bottom with that uh, extra. Uh, you don't have to do that, but sometimes I like the canvas finished. All right, so that's looking a little bit darker and I like that. Alright, so let's try this a little bit. take some of this um, it says Lux paint it's by art company and this is the walnut brown and we're going to touch up some of this texture 
so that it like highlights it a bit. some of this art company Lux paint and this is just gold You know, nothing set in stone. If you don't like it, go over it with a different color. Um, you know, that's always an option. But um, the baby wipe helps to blend so that it's not so stark. But yeah. spray this is one of my this is fossilized amber this is one of my favorites this is by hottie swap and it's called key okay so we're gonna let that um dry we're gonna work on the balloon believe that's going to be the top. I'm going to have to put something up there to repair it. So, um, I want this mostly brass rusty looking. Definitely going with a rusty look. So, I'm going to pour some of this on here. Um, this is some of that fossilized amber that I had. And um, I just had extra, so I just put it on the, the balloon just to give it a few highlights. I do not like wasting anything, so I put my extra paint either on another page or somewhere so that it's not going to waste. Because, you know, this stuff costs money and it adds up and... You know, why not? You never know what you'll be creating in the meantime. Alright, so I'm going to go along and paint this and then I will come back. Alright, so I painted this inside and out because I will... You know have this all open and I don't want them to see any white back all right so now I don't want it so stark so we're gonna try the inks darken it up oh yeah oh that's definitely the look I was looking for Again, this is Slate Gray by Dilutions. Oh, that's perfect. All right, I'm going to go and paint the um, basket black, and then we'll touch it up with some 
other colors. So let me do that. All right, well, I painted this all black, but as this dried, that black slate um, didn't really show up like I wanted it to. So I'm going to make a wash with this black paint and just kind of stain it because I'm really not thinking it's dark enough. Now if that stays, that's better. That's more of what I had in mind. Don't worry about it coming apart like that because we're going to just hot glue anything that seems fragile. Alright, that's a little bit more of where I was going with this very rusty and old. Alright, so let me dry this and I will be back. Okay, well, things have changed. <laughs> As you can see, this one is significantly bigger than this one. Um, so I switched it out because I wasn't liking how that was working. So, um, yeah so this one seems to be very very floppy so i put that insert in here and then i stuffed bubble wrap around it to give it some shape and then as i was putting the trim on i thought you know steampunk is very <clears throat> science meets victorian lacy lacy and gears so I thought instead of doing chain, I was going to continue with this, which is so much easier than the last balloon. So all I'm getting is a little bit of hot glue. You want it about the same spot. These fingers that I got at the Dollar Tree are finger savers, <laughs> to say the least, because I burn myself so much with hot glue. And then I tack it again on this piece of ribbon. And then I just put, I hope you can see this, some in here and then just put it in so that it's taut, so that it looks like it's hanging yeah there we go and then for the middle I'm just gonna glue a piece right there like so so we'll put a piece here and then we'll cut this Some glue behind it. Like so. Yeah. All right. And now I'm going to glue this whole thing down onto the canvas with E6000. And then, okay, so I started filming and realized, well, I started putting this together and realized I didn't start filming. So I wanted to show you that I put this big piece on first, 
Let's see if I can flip it over. And it's laying on top of that cuff. And now I'm just building with all my pieces um, using E6000, of course, and just putting everything, lots of gears, lots of keys, things that make me think steampunk. Alright, so I'm going to go and keep adding on. I think I'm going to put some tassels here. And um, okay, so this is what it looks so far. Um, I decided instead of the tassels, I would do something different. And I found this in my jewelry, and I really like that. Uh, so. But I wanted the background to be a little bit more darker, so I took back this stencil, and I'm going to use some Distress Archival ink, and I'm going to stencil with just some ink, just to get a little more... punky. I can hardly see it. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. And then you can also just take some regular rubber stamps and just um, I'm using some stays on permanent ink and just put some stamps randomly. This looked very Victorian to me. take some of this archival ink and then just go around the edges like we do. And that's just going to finish it off a little bit more. One more thing, and I'm, I apologize, I feel like I've been jumping all over the place because we started with one and then we went to another one and but this worked out better because it was smaller and I know it's different the only thing that's different between this one and the bigger one is the trim that I used and I had to add this folk art metallic solid bronze um, in the paint now as you can see I don't know if you can see but there's little pieces of white all in there once this is completely dry, I'm going to go in with a metallic marker and fill that all in so that there's no white showing. I also have this piece of, uh, I don't know if it's this piece or that piece, but I found this Journey tape that I had, and I just think that's just perfect. So I'm going to glue that in like so, and that's going to be my piece. So I hope you really like this. Um, as you can see, it's very different from the first one that we did. And um, 
you know, you got to be into that kind of thing. But, you know, a lot of people are. I like it. I don't subscribe to it much, but yeah, I like it. And uh, there was a face over there. Yeah, I think I might add that to it too. Just to, yeah, I like that. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. Please um, like and share and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and please share it with your friends. I greatly appreciate it. And um, you can visit us on our website, artistrycollaborative.org. Or you can listen to my podcast, Inner Promptings, on iTunes, Spotify, Google, and Apple uh, podcasts. Uh, it's everywhere. Uh, and um, if you have any comments or questions about what I did or how I did it, because it was stop and go there for a while. And again, you know, stuffing it was not something I had intended, but it, it worked out really well. Um, but I hope you are well. And... Join me in my next video so you can try. Okay, so like I told you, two very different outcomes with very uh, similar basic supplies. So it is really up to you. Use your imagination, use colors, use anything and everything to create your one-of-a-kind magnificent creations. You are creative believe that it is true all you need to do is try again thank you so much for being here please subscribe and share this channel uh, I love doing these videos and I need to do more and I hope you want to see them if you have any comments just leave them below and I will get back to you any questions any ideas that things you want to see it's what I'm here for so thank you and be well and keep on creating of course.